Tim Ryan, Beto, Leon Castro, Seth Moulton, Gillibrand, Wayne Muslim, and Mary Ann, Michael Bennett, Seth Stack, OJ Duff, and Bullet. Cory Booker, Kamala, John Delaney, and the Ball, Mayor Pete, and Andrew Yang, Liz Warren, and Amy K. Tom Steyer, Bloomberg, just made everything worse. Kelsey Gallup, stick too long, but Bernie ended the song. We didn't want to bat him. Been around for decades, I don't even know his age. We didn't want to bat him. And even though we all lost, he still gave us some the sauce. Welcome to 2020 Thursday. I'm your host, Luke Radel. And the reason why we're coming to you on a Thursday is because we have some breaking news. Cue up the over-the-top graphics. We are now learning that Bernie Sanders has suspended his campaign. I wish I could give you better news, but I think you know the truth. Thank you, over-the-top graphics department. That's right, Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont has dropped out of the Democratic primary race, leaving Joe Biden as the presumptive Democratic nominee. Now, because Senator Bernie Sanders ran such an important campaign for this 2020 primary process and the Democratic Party as a whole, we want to look back on his campaign right now. Bernie Sanders started his campaign many, many months ago, running again after losing to Hillary Clinton in 2016. And many people were wondering after the 2016 election if the party should have embraced a more progressive agenda, considering that they lost pretty badly to Donald Trump and all the Republicans down ballot in 2016. And now they had a chance to get an answer to that question. Bernie Sanders was running to be at the top of the ballot once again, but this time he knew he was going to be going head to head with Donald Trump. But here was the problem. There was this thought that was in the heads of, well, pretty much everybody that Bernie Sanders was too radical to win in the important states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and states all across the country that the Democratic Party needed to flip in order to beat Donald Trump up and down the ballot. And even though polling showed that in a general election matchup, Bernie Sanders was strong against President Trump, he was never really able to shake off that thought that his ideas of democratic socialism might be a little bit too much for some of the moderate voters to handle. But the first test of his electability was seen in the Iowa caucus, when even though the results were kind of muddled for about a week, he won the popular vote and went on to do really well in his favorite state of New Hampshire. But he surprised people by doing well also in Nevada, a state once thought to be solid for Vice President Joe Biden, which popped some questions into the minds of many voters going into the late February South Carolina primary as to whether Joe Biden was going to win that state. Suddenly, Joe Biden was no longer the front runner of the Democratic primary as Bernie Sanders topped the polls and made things really close in South Carolina. But on election night in South Carolina, it was made pretty clear the voters' feelings about Bernie Sanders, particularly the African-American community and older voters who voted for Joe Biden in large numbers. It led to an exodus of moderate candidates from the field like Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg and other past dropout candidates like Beto O'Rourke, Cory Booker, and Kamala Harris threw their support behind Joe Biden. And suddenly on Super Tuesday, what was once thought to be a wall of states set to go for Bernie flipped to vote for Joe Biden. In state after state on Super Tuesday, Super Tuesday 2, and Super Tuesday 3, Joe Biden beat Bernie Sanders and left him very little room to breathe into an election that was about to be shut down due to the coronavirus crisis. And as everything stood still, it became pretty clear who was going to be the nominee and who was not. So that's the end of 2020 Tuesdays, but not the end of our 2020 election coverage right here on Elected News. As they say, on to the general.